Starting the day right can be a tall order for many people, especially if you're a corporate drone that's barely hanging on by a thread called benefits and bonuses. In fact, that's precisely what Reiji Kirio's life was like. But now, he's your typical isekai resident with skills in evaluation and medicine making. He just finished whipping up another delicious potion, which delights Noella, a werewolf and the shop's poster girl. Master made another superb creation. Living with them is Mina Florette, a ghost who is also the shop assistant and housekeeper. Together, they lovingly manage the Kirio drugstore. That morning, Mr. Alf, a general store owner, pleads with Reiji to let him sell his delicious super potions. Mina takes delight in Mr. Alf for giving the potion a name when it's already officially called an energy potion, a potion that cures exhaustion and causes alertness. Incredibly hyped up, Mr. Alf speaks right into Reiji's face and tells him he has never tasted a potion this delicious. Sadly, most brews in this area taste like garbage, so it's best to let Kalta know about this marvelous concoction. Besides, Mr. Alf will have his fifth child, so he needs money to sustain his family's needs. Actually, Mr. Alf does not have to go full manipulative sad boy on his part because Reiji is okay with him selling the potions. Delighted with Reiji's kind heart in approving his request, Mr. Alf is confident that he can make more sums of money, enough for his fifth child. He might as well add another one. Let's go, baby mill. As Mr. Alf goes on his merry way, Mina computes their profit from the transaction, and she thinks Reiji sold the items too cheaply. However, Reiji does not mind as Mr. Alf helped him when he opened the store. On the other hand, Mina and Noella are confident that Reiji's potions will sell prominently, and that Mr. Alf will be able to satisfy his family's needs. Since then, rumors about Reiji's potion throughout the town of Kalta spread like wildfire. So many people enjoy its delicious and unique taste. So many buyers constantly visit Mr. Alf's store. He even has to limit the products to one per person so they won't quickly run out of stock. Some even go to Kirio Drugstore to buy them. One fine day, a customer's little girl is having a bit of a tantrum because of waiting for so long. She insists to her mother that they go home now. Deiji tries to calm her down, but he fails. Seeing her master in distress, Noella distracts the girl with her cute fluffy tail. The little girl laughs in glee, and Reiji gives the item to the customer. With so much gladness, the little girl grabs Noella's tail, which immediately makes her uncomfortable. Apparently, Noella only allows Reiji to touch her tail. The little girl calls Noella fluffy and asks if she will be there next time. Noella nods and says that her master saved her life, so she will serve him forever. The mother and the little girl leave the drugstore with big smiles on their faces. As the day nears a close, Reiji catches Noella drinking all the potions. What is she doing? Noella apologizes because her master's brews are so delicious that she can't help it. Reiji scolds her to not drink too much of it and hides the box of potions away. Meanwhile, Mina asks Reiji to do some groceries for her. She hands over a parchment containing the list of items she needs. Reiji invites Noella to come with him, to which she cheerfully obliges. While walking down the road, Noella notices a lot of flowers and herbs that help make medicines. Reiji notices how Noella acts on her instincts and recalls how he met and cured her as a wolf. Suddenly, he remembers Mina's shopping list and gets it out of his pocket. He is shocked when he reads what Mina needs. Wool undies. Come to think of it, do ghosts wear wool undies when they're unalive? As Reiji blushes at the thought of Mina wearing wool, a man rushes for his life as he is being chased by a girl. Noella promises to protect her master, but Reiji feels like she's being overdramatic. Until the aggressive girl brings out a dagger? Now that's a problem. Reiji panics and grabs Noella to run for their lives. But the guy grabs Reiji's clothes. He begs for help, but Reiji refuses. However, it's too late since the guy is already hiding behind him and the girl points her dagger at him. Reiji tries to calm her down as he introduces himself and tells her he owns a drugstore. Ferris, the enraged girl, seems to have heard about Reiji, the alchemist, and suddenly blames him for Zeril's behavior. Now, Reiji tells Zeril to not hide behind him, but he can't just handle his crazy girlfriend. Ooh, wrong move. Hearing her boyfriend's description of her, she goes full on bonkers and exclaims, she is not crazy. Seeing Ferris's agitation, Reiji begs her to put the knife down. She does, and Noella immediately puts it away. However, Ferris is still shouting and going full on Emily Rose as she talks to herself. 
Since he's caught in the middle of things, Deji asks Zeril, who's about to sneak away, what really happened. As Noella calms Ferris by playing with her, Zeril explains that he and Ferris are lovers. However, Ferris worries excessively that she can't even sleep at night. He recalls the day when he was just buying bread. Ferris suddenly barged inside the bakery, accusing Zeril of cheating. It also happened when he accidentally bumped into a girl while walking on the streets. Oh, okay, we have a yandere here, folks. Obviously, their relationship is pretty toxic, but Zeril can't break up with her because she does more terrible things when he tries to do it. Besides, when he sees Ferris acting normally, Zeril remembers how cute she actually is. Oh boy, it's... yeah, that's really toxic right there. He thinks something's possessing Ferris, so he asks Reiji's help to exorcise the demon inside her. Now, Reiji reminds him that it's not his expertise. He begs to his knees as he is very desperate. Noella turns into a wolf to entertain Ferris while Reiji observes her. Based on his observation, he might know the right potion for her, so he tells Zeril to go to his drugstore tonight to get the remedy. As they return home, Reiji hands over the note to Mina and tells her she might have given the wrong list of items. Mina is so embarrassed that she zooms up in the air to hide. Meanwhile, without further ado, Reiji starts concocting Ferris's medication. There's a lot of shaking, chopping, stomping, sleeping, and dancing to create the perfect potion. That night, Zeril receives the potion. Reiji tells him to have Ferris drink it before bedtime. Zeril is so excited to exorcise the evil out of Ferris that Mina forgets to give him the prescription before he leaves hurriedly. Oh no. But no worries, she can give it to him tomorrow. The next day, Zeril comes into the store with an overdramatic greeting. He tells Reiji that when he has awakened, Ferris has a calm expression, and she is her cute self. Zeril is so happy that the medicine has extracted the evil from her. However, Reiji tells him that Zeril genuinely does not get it. Ferris is not possessed by anything. What Reiji gave her was tea to help her relax. Reiji hands over the prescription and it's laden flower tea. This tea soothes the nerves and reduces their anxiety and irritation. Since Zeril told him Ferris has trouble sleeping, Reiji thought of this. People who can't sleep properly tend to be anxious and emotionally unstable. Because of a well-done job, Zeril pays Reiji a significant sum. Naturally, Reiji is shocked by this, but Zeril does not mind because he's apparently a rich kid. Zeril is the son of the Alonza family and owns most of the land here, and so Ferris and Zeril go on their merry way. Meanwhile, Reiji feels pathetic. Damn, Normie enjoying a fulfilling life. He hopes Zeril explodes. Noella notices that her master is emotionally unstable, so Mina pushes some laden flowers tea into his throat. Oh boy, I guess we all need a shot of that, huh? The following day, Noella smells something so awful it makes her eyes water. It turns out there's an Utsubo flower in the forest. This flower produces an unpleasant smell that only monsters can detect. Noella becomes teary-eyed because of the irritating odor, so Reiji has to think of something to help her. He grabs flowers and other things around him to concoct a botanical deodorant. It is a natural deodorant made from a 100% plant products. Deji showers the Utsuba flower with the deodorant, and it immediately takes effect. Because of this, Mina suggests that they sell it. Well, Mina is it wrong, as the product has become a massive hit for humans who use it as a bathroom deodorant. Meanwhile, another testimony of the super potion's effectiveness. An old man finishing the repair of a store in minutes. All hail the super potion. Ah, uh, another day in the drugstore. Deji, Mina, and Noella are having lunch. Noella is so happy to eat Mina's delicious cooking, but she's interrupted by three children staring at her from the window. Reiji lets the children in, but they're so ecstatic to touch Noella like she's a pet. Oh no. Reiji then realizes that these are Mr. Alf's children. Seeing how uncomfortable and annoyed Noella is, Reiji hands them an exact copy of Noella's tale. Apparently, he has been working on this tale all night. Mina is quite impressed with Reiji's talents. He is good with handicrafts too. However, the affinity for the fake tale doesn't last long as the children like the real thing more, so Reiji thinks he should make a whole substitute image next time. Thankfully, Mina offers the children food they cannot resist. Noella is saved for now. As he looks at Mina and the children, 
Deji thinks he needs to give Mina a break every now and then. Lunch break is over and Mina is so happy with the new medicine Reiji gave her. This medicine, detergent, makes washing the dishes a lot easier. With this new potion, Mina might enjoy cleaning the dirty plates. However, Deji says she does not have to do anything today because he wants her to rest for a bit. Mina worries about who will cook for them, but Deji has it all figured out. In the Rabbit Tavern, Deji and Nomella pick up the lunch boxes he ordered. Rina, the storekeeper, gladly wraps the food for them. She hands them their orders and thanks Reiji for the botanical deodorant that is such a big help to her. Since she likes it, Reiji recommends trying his new product, the detergent. Overhearing their conversation, a big dude, Dawes, and a thin guy, Maz, approach Reiji. They already know that Reiji is the mind behind the super potion, and they menacingly ask to talk to him for a minute. However, their captain, Annabelle, stops them before they can say more. They are the Red Cat Brigade, a mercenary company hired by the Lord to protect this town. Annabelle apologizes to Reiji, which he takes gladly, and goes on his merry way. But Dawes and Maz are eager to tell Reiji something, so they follow him. Now as they catch up with Reiji and Noella on the road, Dawes and Maz go down to their knees to beg for Reiji's help. They ask if Reiji can deliver five of his super potions to their barracks daily for half of the price. Annabelle hastily chases after them and orders them to stop. However, Dawes and Maz know that their captain cannot survive a day without those super potions. Furthermore, everybody in the barracks knows that the captain sneaks two or all five elixirs when things go wrong. Annabelle denies this, but there's no point in hiding. Aww, they just care about their captain! Now that's very sweet. Irritated, the captain shouts, What belongs to the Red Cat Brigade is mine, and what's mine is mine too. Now Noella repeats the captain's statement proudly. If there's one thing she shall learn... That's not it. Yeah. Hearing about their financial crisis, Reiji agrees to give them five potions daily for free. Yes. For free. In return, they have to use Reiji's detergent and spread the word about its effectiveness. The money that Reiji gets from selling the detergent will be enough to compensate for the free potions. If that's the deal, they're willing to do what the medicine god, I mean Reiji, tells them to. Now back at the Rabbit Tavern, Rina teaches Annabelle how to wash the dishes. First, the captain needs to put the detergent in the cloth and lather it so it will bubble up. Annabelle is amazed by such sorcery while Rena is delighted with the bubbles and fluffiness. Meanwhile, Dawes and Maz feel some kind of guilty pleasure watching their captain wash the dishes. As Annabelle raises the plate she's washing, it stuns them to see how bright and shiny it is in an instant. This makes Dawes and Maz give more respect to the medicine god, aka the great Reiji. While eating dinner, Deji tells Mina what happened earlier. Mina is thrilled to hear such excellent news and reminds Noella to not drink the potion when she delivers them. Noella replies that what belongs to her master is hers, and what's hers is hers too. Meanwhile, Mina is grateful to Reiji and Noella for having her rest day, but she prefers doing something. She gets bored easily when she has nothing to do. And besides, washing the dishes will be a lot easier now with the help of the detergent she named scrub a dub dub now the next morning, Annabelle is too impatient to wait for the potion to get delivered to their barracks. At the drugstore, Noella is just on her way to bring them. But as soon as she opens the door, Annabelle is already standing there. Embarrassed, Annabelle makes an excuse that she was just passing by and since she's already there, she might as well get the potions. So from now on, the captain will be picking them up every morning. She also formally introduces herself to Reiji. Later that day, Reiji realizes that only a few herbs are left while foraging. Luckily, he glances upon Togiroso's seeds. He asks Noella to gather all of them so they can plant them, but where? Fortunately, Zeril is more than happy to lend Reiji a part of their land as long as he gives him advice in the future. Whatever that means, Reiji is just glad to have vast land to plant his seeds. He and Noella are so enthusiastic about starting planting. Unfortunately, Zeril forgot to tell him about their tiny problem with their plants. Apparently, they are being ravaged by some kind of animal, and because of this, there's a good chance the same will happen with Reiji's seeds. Luckily, Reiji thinks of an effective ingredient that can cast away whatever creature disturbs the plants, the Utsubo flower. With the right ingredients, Reiji formulated a beast repellent that produces a smell offensive to beasts and monsters. Mina gives it a better name, Beast Begone. Now, Zeril is amazed by how fast Reiji has concocted the potion.
potion and calls him a wizard. Since he made this, the potion has become popular with the farmers to eliminate pesky beasts. However, Noella doesn't want to get close to Deji because her master is super stinky. Annabelle picks up her daily dose of super potions the following day, but she asks for an additional five. She mentions that she's not the one drinking them. Annabelle's about to leave when Dawes and Ma suddenly intervene. For the second time, they have a favor to ask their medicine god. Reiji clarifies he does not want to be called like that, so they resort to calling him Brother Reiji. Makalta has been visited by lots of bandits lately. That's why the mercenaries are working double time. The captain gives her share of super potions to their comrades. Dawes and Maz are asking for Reiji's help because they will lose their jobs if they can't do their work properly. The captain doesn't want to ask for help, but Reiji needs to assist them since the mercenaries have done so much to protect the town. But how is he gonna help? When he sees Noella cry because of cutting onions in the kitchen, Deiji thinks of a bright idea. He asks Dawes and Moz to bring him the highest proof liquor. Dawes and Moz smile at him, thinking he's a drinker, but Deiji clarifies it's for the medicine. Meanwhile, Deiji requests Annabelle's help with grinding the caption peppers. When Dawes and Moz return with the liquor, Deiji starts his medicine formulations. He works flawlessly with all the grinding, shaking, pounding, and again dancing that goes along with it. Then finally, the potion is created, the caption fluid. Don't get too close to it though, it's as bad as tear gas. The first victims, Dawes and Maz. And thinking that it's easy to handle, Annabelle becomes the second victim. Finally, trying to stop them from doing any more stupidity, Deiji is the third victim. Oh boy. Now the three mercenaries can't even decide who will carry the potion until they agree to take turns. Several days later, the bandits flee Kalta, screaming and crying. Finding something to wake up and smile for is truly a rare thing. But it looks like Reiji struck a gold mine with his new life here. Likewise, the people of Kalta got lucky with him and his wonderful abilities. Now, if only Dawes and Maz could stop calling him a god, that'll be all okay now. <laughs> Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.